So today we're beginning a, a brand new series called The Everyday Church. Uh, this is just a follow-up to Vision Day. On Vision Day where we talked about the, the word for this year is this word engage. Uh, and we talked about how we're moving from passive observers to passionate followers. What does it mean to move from passionate observers to, or from passive observers to passionate followers? Well, we're going to talk about that for the next eight weeks because we're looking at the life and the ministry of Jesus. That's the model that we want to follow as a church. So when, if you miss Vision Day, you look at this, this uh, graphic that we have and you're like, what is engage with one, engage with three, engage with 12, engage with one another? I have no idea what that means. Uh, well, I, I'm, we're going to be explaining that over the next few weeks, but I'd also encourage you to go back if you miss Vision Day explained all of that, so I'm not going to take time to talk about that, but especially if you call Core Church home, you really need to get that in you because it's not something that we're doing just for 2021, but we believe God has set our course and our direction for years to come, that we are going to be the everyday church, moving from passive observers to passionate followers. So how do you move from being passive to passionate? Well, we believe that there's eight core practices there's eight things that move us from passive to passionate, and so we're going to be looking at these eight things over the next eight weeks. So today we're starting with engage with one. Today I want to talk specifically about the core practice of daily devotions, daily devotions. So if you have a Bible, go to Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, and I read out of the New Living Translation. If you don't have a Bible, I just encourage you to download version. That's a great app. Uh, a lot of us use that. We use that for our reading plans. It's just a really, really helpful app. But Mark is one of the four Gospels. Poor Mark, he didn't get a lot of street cred. Not a lot of people preach out of Mark. They usually go, especially the story I'm going to preach today, they'll go to Luke or they'll go somewhere else. Because um, Mark wasn't one of the 12, but he was very close to the 12. In fact, he was really close to Peter. And so this is really almost a letter written by Peter, in a way, and some of the apostles. He wrote down their stories and their accounts of Jesus in the Gospels. And so here in Mark chapter 4, and I'm reading out in the New Living Translation, Jesus is telling a, a parable, a, a story. And so this story, he says this, listen, exclamation point. He says, listen, this is like your dad. This is like your dad saying, hey, listen, okay? So <laughs> he's saying, listen, turn to somebody and tell them, listen, Listen, uh, so this is what Jesus is saying. A farmer went out to plant some seed, and as he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath, and the birds came and they ate it up. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon withered under the hot sun, and since it didn't have roots, it, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants, so they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted, they grew, they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as been planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. And if you hear that and you go, I have ears, but I don't understand. <laughs> it's okay, because neither did the crowd. And so Jesus pulled the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples aside, and he began to talk to them. And we're going to look at what he said to those disciples and how he explained that parable to them as we talk today about this core practice of daily devotions. Let's pray. God, thank you for the moments that we have here to look at your word and to uh, grow in your word. And I just ask that in the moments we have with all the crazy week that we've all had and what we're looking ahead, and I don't know how anybody else feels, uh, but anybody else feel scattered? Anybody on the stage feel scattered? You guys feel, I feel, I'm feeling scattered. I, I have been feeling scattered. God, would you just collectively bring us together in this moment? You want to speak to us and you have a word for us. And so help us, we pray in Jesus' name and everybody set. Amen. Amen. Uh, so most of you know that uh, Laura's mom lives with us, and she is an amazing, amazing woman. I, she is literally the joy of my life. I, I love this lady more than you can imagine, and it isn't just because she does home-cooked meals, okay? Because she's old school, okay? Imagine like your, 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 your grandma or your, your mother-in-law. Some, you, some of you are like, I can't imagine my mother-in-law living with me. <laughs> some of you are like, I, no, I don't care how good she cooks. Books, she ain't living with me. I, I get that, okay? Although I know some of you ladies are like, man, mom could live with me. Hey, and she could do the cooking. All right. 
Of course, some of you are like, mom would be living with me. No, okay, <laughs> I get that. But my mother-in-law, she is amazing. I absolutely love this lady. And so she's always cooking these home-cooked meals for us. But, but um, I don't like vegetables. The show of the band here, how many of you like vegetables? Vegetable eaters, non-vegetable eaters. Anybody raise your hand? Okay, okay, yeah. So where you are, vegetable eaters, non-vegetable eaters. Okay, I am not, I don't like vegetables. I don't like anything really green. I don't like broccoli. I don't like spinach. I don't like, I don't like things orange. I don't like carrots. Um, and she is constantly trying to get me to eat my vegetables. Always, Brad, you need, you need to eat, you need your greens. You need to eat your vegetables. That's what you need. You need these tonight. You need to eat. And I'm like, I don't, but I, no matter how much I try to tell her, I don't like vegetables. She's still trying, just like, and, and, when, and whenever she's doing this, I feel as if I'm like two years old again. Like, like I feel like this. Like, look at this picture. <laughs> That's how I feel, okay? That's what I feel like when I'm sitting at the table. What, am I, am I two again? What's happening in my life here? Just a couple of weeks ago, she put a pea on a spoon and said, here, I want you to just try at least one. Here, she's like this. Here, here, try just one, just one. Here, here. And, she's, and I'm like, okay, 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 I'll try it. And I don't know if anybody likes peas, but to me, when I put it in my mouth and it began to chew it, I remembered, yep, this is the same feeling and taste I had when I was seven. Mm -hmm. Imagine a, you know when a cat coughs up a fur ball, and if you took it and wrapped it in saran wrap and then chewed on it? That's pretty much what, it, yeah, nobody's eating peas anymore, are you? <laughs> Nobody wants peas anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't, I don't like my vegetables. So I was talking to my sister-in-law, and she says to me, Brad, have you not heard they have a pill? A vegetable pill. No joke. I went out and I bought these vegetable pills, okay? Look, this is it right here. I, they, they have now put vegetables in a pill form. Look at this. Every vegetable you could want is in, broccoli's in here, spinach is in here, carrots is in here. You know the one, the one vegetable that's not in here? Peas. Peas are not in this vegetable, okay? But I, it just, I, want, it, I want it to be easy. I mean, I just, oh, I just dropped my pill. I got to take that later. So hang on, let me get that. can can't lose my pill. <laughs> oh, but I, I just, I know I should eat vegetables. I, I, I know they're good for me, but I, I just don't want to. I, I think this is really how a lot of people feel when it comes to reading the Bible. I mean, it's like, I know it's good for me. I know I should, but I just struggle, and, I, and I'm just not really doing it. And truth is, we're, we're, looking for, we're looking for a magic pill. We're looking for easy. Like, what would make it easy? Like, I talked just a moment ago about version, and I love version. I, I, I use it every day. But, but version, if you're not careful, can become the magic pill. It can become easy because they'll just, they will, you don't even have to open up the app. They will text you the verse of the day, and, and you can just, boop, pops up, read the verse of the day. I'm good. Took my pill. I'm, I'm good. They recently came out, I think it was the last year or two, I guess in the last year, they came out with uh, the YouVersion story. Have you guys seen this? The YouVersion story. So it's like Instagram story or Facebook story. And you go on there, and, you, and uh, when you look at it, it'll give you the scripture, and it shows the verse of the day, and you read the verse of the day, and then you click to the next picture, and you don't even have to think about the scripture. Like there's somebody who's telling you, a little two-minute devotional, and they're telling you what the scripture it means that you just read. And then when they're done, you click to the next image, and it has a prayer already written for you. Like you don't, you don't really, it's, it's a simple, easy magic pill. Now what's crazy is, as easy as it is, and as, as uh, um, the access that we have right now, the word, why is it we are struggling with reading the Bible? Why is it most Christians struggle with reading the Bible? I think it's because we're not supposed to be reading the Bible. <laughs> now, hang on, before you, you know, go get the pitchforks and the torches, you know, and say, off with his head, heretic! No, that's not what I'm, listen, listen, I'm not, it's, it's not about reading the Bible, but it's about engaging in a relationship with God. That's what it's about. And when we look at this parable uh, that Jesus gives to us, what we see that he's trying to get said to us here is that, think about this, we can sit 
and engage with the creator of the universe every single day. You have access to the, to the creator of the universe. And, and Jesus told his disciples this very thing. Look, look at verse 11. Verse 11, he says, you are permitted. Say that with me. You are permitted. Come on, turn to somebody here. It's like you, you are permitted, you are permitted, you are permitted. You are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God. Now, just stop for a moment. Like, let that sink in for just a moment. You, you are permitted, like you're permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. Now, before we went on this morning, I was talking about my radio career. Before I was in ministry, most of you know I I was in radio, Uh, still am. I'm going to be on the radio this afternoon. You can catch me this afternoon. I'll, I'll be on the radio every Sunday afternoon. But when I was in my radio career, I had access to artists and celebrities that other people didn't have access to. They, they would come by the radio station or I would go and see them in concert. Anybody from Richard Simmons to MC Hammer. How's that for diversity right there? Richard Simmons, the candy stripe shorts. Anybody remember the, that guy? Wow. We should get him on the worship team. Can you imagine, can you imagine him on the worship team? I mean, he would just, you want to talk, you want to talk about energy, that guy had some energy, and then MC Hammer, if you're like, who's that? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, like three of you guys. Where's the band to back me up on that one? Okay, yeah, can't touch this. But I have access. I I had access that other people didn't have. The disciples, they had access to God. The crowd didn't have access, but but they had access. They could walk with Jesus. They could, they could talk with Jesus. And, and you and I have the same access through the word of God. Like You have access. You can sit down with the creator of the universe and you can ask questions. God, I don't understand this. I need to know about this. I'm seeking out this. You can, you can get access to, to wisdom, to guidance, to to joy, to access to peace, access to the, the very presence, being in the very presence of God. We all have access. And in this parable, Jesus refers to God's word as seed that's planted in soil. Here's what God wants to do. He wants to plant God's word in the soil of your soul. So how's the soil of your soul? How's the soil of your soul? Turn to somebody and say, how's the soil of your soul? How's the soil of your soul today? Because if a seed's gonna produce, I'd like for you to write this down, okay, write this down, this is important. You've got to cultivate the soil of your soul. You've got to cultivate the soil of your soul. And Jesus says in this parable, he says there's four different types of soil, But here's the thing, only one of them, only one will produce a harvest. Only one will produce fruit. Only one will produce the things that you desire in your life. Here's the first one, verse 15. He says, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and what? Say it with me, what? Take it away. Take it away. Write this down. Here's the first seed. Here's the first soil. The soil of pride. The soil of pride. Jesus, in the, in the parable, he talks about these birds that came and they t- the seed is scattered and the birds come and they take it away before it can be used. And for Jesus, it was birds. For me, it's squirrels. I, I, I talked about this recently. You probably heard me talking about this, but I've got bird feeders all over my backyard, but I'm battling squirrels because as soon as I put the bird seed out, the, the squirrels come and they take it away. It is the most frustrating thing ever. My mother-in-law, I love her, that I just spoke about, she said, Brad, get an air gun. I love that lady. Laura's like, no, that's terrible. That's awful. Don't do that. I'm like, no, I'm getting air again. So, I mean, but they they just, but I can no sooner get the seed out than the, the squirrels sweep in and they take the seed away. I mean, and then they, it's like a buffet for them, okay? It's like the good old, it's like a, a golden corral buffet. Anybody remember when we used to go to buffets? <laughs> Nobody's going to buffets right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a buffet for them. I mean, they, and they're mocking me. I look out there and like, I have put Vaseline on the pole to keep them from going up the pole. And here's the squirrel out there. It's like flash dance. He's like, what a feeling. And he's got bird seed just coming down on him, you know? Like, listen, 
This is what Jesus is trying to say here. I don't know what he's trying to say. Hang on here. <laughs> got caught up in my flat. I got caught up in that for a second. Sorry about that. Listen, here, right now, right now God is scattering seed. Like right now. Right now, seed is being scattered. The word of God, the message, you are hearing the message of God. You're, it's not, you're not hearing a preacher. We're reading and we're learning from the very word of God. This is a seed that is going out, but, but what, is, what does Jesus say? He says the devil is waiting to snatch it. He's waiting to take it away. And he is so sly. Because what he will say to you is things like this. Oh, Brad's talking about daily devotions. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Read your Bible. I know. That's a, and the enemy says, yeah, you, you, you don't need, read your Bible every day? Read your Bible. You don't need to read your Bible every day. You're, you know what? You're good. You're good. You know, you know the stories. You know this story. You've heard this story. You can just put it on autopilot. You're fine. And you know what's happening when that's going on? The devil is wearing a footpath across the soil of your soul. He's beating it down with everything that he's saying. Oh, you're good. You don't need that. You're fine. You know the word. Why would you need? You don't need to read it every day. I mean, you, you, you've heard this for so long. You're good. Don't let the devil wear a footpath across your soul. Come on, turn to somebody wherever you are and tell them, don't let the devil wear a footpath across your soul. You've got to cultivate the soil of your soul. So the second one that we see here in this parable, verse 16, the seed on the rocky soil. It represents those who hear the message. This is Jesus talking. And immediately they receive it with joy. But say this with me. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They don't make it for the long haul. They, they fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. So if the first soil is the soil of pride, this next soil is the soil of problems. The soil of problems. Uh, if, you, if you want fruit, if you want fruit in your, if you want fruit, you've got two choices in your life, don't you? I mean, you can go to the grocery store or you can grow a tree in your backyard. I, I'm, not, I'm not growing a tree in my backyard. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting a tractor and a combine. I'm going to, you know, host some rows, man. I'm going I'm to get, get in the dirt and the soil. No, no, none of us are doing that, okay? I mean, I, that I know of. I, maybe you are a farmer. God bless you for that. Maybe you, you know, like uh, Sib, she's a gardener. She loves, like, getting in there and growing her own. That, that ain't me. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not getting a tractor and a combine. That's not, not going to happen. Because I can go to the store and they put it out for me. I mean, I, why would I go to the trouble of planting a seed and working the soil and waiting on the fruit when I can just go to the store and they put it out for me? This is how a lot of people are approaching their spiritual walk with Jesus. And this is very dangerous. And you got to be careful. Turn to somebody, tell them, be careful. Be careful. Because you can come into a moment like this. You can show up at church on a, on a Sunday and you, and you go, well, I mean, they, like right now, I mean, man, you just, you're putting the fruit out for me and I just kind of kind of get the fruit. Or, or maybe you're in a core group. And you're like, you know, and I, I go to the group and then the group leader or somebody in the group, they read the scripture. And, but, but, they're, but you're not growing your own fruit. Instead, you're eating someone else's fruit. Do not eat someone else's fruit. You've got to grow your own fruit. Fruit. Turn to somebody, tell them, grow your own fruit. You got to grow. Oh, look at them like you mean to point at them if you want to and say, grow your own fruit. You got to grow your, your own fruit. So listen, because when you, when you don't grow your own fruit, when you, are, when you are eating someone else's fruit, you don't develop a root system. You have no root system, and you wonder why when problems come, when worries, when stress, when struggles come your way, and you're just a boom, easily toppled. It's because you're eating someone else's fruit and you have not developed a healthy root system. So let me give you something real quick here. How do you grow, the, how do you grow your own fruit? Write this down, three things. Read, reflect, respond. Read, reflect, and respond. How do you grow your own fruit? You 
you start by reading the word. I mean, as we've been saying that through this whole message is read the word. But listen, here's, this is where most of us get caught up and we get, you know, backwards and we don't know what to do because we don't know where to start. Like, where do I start? And so we just kind of open the Bible and we point and we're like, hmm, David had many wives. That's interesting. Hmm, pull over here. Go ye therefore and you will be blessed. Woo, happy Valentine's Day to me. No, that would be the worst thing you could do, okay? Honey, so I was reading this morning in the scriptures and God has told me. No, no, that's, but you don't point and click. This is why we have a daily devotion that we put together, okay? And we use you version for that. Like in your inbox, if you're not getting email updates from us, you're not getting the daily devotion, you can get it on our social media. But we have a daily devotion that goes right along with the Sunday message. I love this. So many people at Core Church all week long, we're all going through the same reading plan together. Our core group's going through the same reading plan together, sharing with one another about the word. So read it. And then, but then you've got to reflect on it. This takes time. You've got to slow down. And you've got to stop. And you've got you to listen. What, what might God be saying to me through his word? And then the third thing is, is respond. you got to take action. you, you got to, you, I, I read it, I reflected on it, and now I've got to take action on it. I've got, I've got to respond to God's word. Cultivate the soil of your soul. Here's the third one, the seed on verse 18. It says, the seed that fell among the thorns. It represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is what? It's, it's crowded out. It's crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, the desire for other things, and this is, this is the hard, what does it say? So no fruit is produced. No fruit is produced. So there's, there's the soil of pride, there's the soil of problems, and there's this third one, this is the soil of, of priorities, the soil of priorities. See, I, I don't know why, but we wear busy like a badge, don't we? It's like a merit badge. It's like, look at me. You would say to somebody, how are you doing? They say, busy. Oh, well, look at you, busy little beaver. Aren't you just that? Let's just get you, aren't you? You're just a busy little soldier, aren't you? Just let's give you another merit badge. Congratulations, little busy man. I don't know why, but we love to tell people we're so busy. Truthfully, this is, this is free. You can do this what you want. You're as busy as you want to be. Nobody's making you be busy. You know what I love is right now, you decided this was going to be important. This was going to be important, what you're doing right now. You're as busy as you want to be. And I think what happens to us is, <laughs> say, I would read the Bible, but I'm so, anybody? I'm so busy. I would read the Bible, I'm just so busy, I just, I just, don't, I just don't have time. But here's the thing you got to remember. What you prize, you have to prioritize. What you prize, you have got to prioritize. So, like, what do you prize? What's important to you in your life? Think about this for a moment. What's important to you in your life? Is it, is it a priority? Are you taking time for it? It's Valentine's Day. We would, if you have a, a, a significant other, somebody special in your life, okay, and the only time you are prioritizing them is on Valentine's Day, you can say they're your prize, but your priorities are telling them otherwise. It's not that you don't prize them. I can tell you, man, you have family, you have friends. How many times do we say, man, I've got these friends and I just value these friendships, and we say, we should get together, and you realize, my goodness, we've not gone to lunch, they've not come over to the house, I've not done anything in like a year, okay? I mean, it's I keep saying that, but you, just because you prize it, you've got to make it a priority. You may, you may say, God, God's put a dream in me. How many of us have been given a dream? There's something you want to accomplish in your life, and you're like, yes, but you're not prioritizing it. you got, you got to carve out time. Well, I'm just so busy. I, I, I want to get to that dream. but No, no, you, if it's a prize, you got to make it a priority. Some of you, it's your education. You're like, man, my education is important to me. I, I, I want to further myself. I, I want to have, I, I've got dreams and things I want to do, and my education is important. Guess what? You've got to prioritize that. The same thing is true in our relationship with Jesus. Like, I, I would bet if, you, if, you're watching, if you're watching right now, I'm guessing that you would count Jesus as a prize in your life, okay? But he's not a Cracker Jack prize. He's not a cereal prize. Like, ooh, the bottom of the box, what did I get? Oh, I got a cute tattoo. No, 
No, God, listen, God has to be first. God has to be the chief prize and the chief priority. It's why he said, you can't have no other gods before me. You can't have anything else before me. You can't put that career, that dream, you can't put it before me. That time, your family, you can't put your family before me. Sports, you can't put sports before me. Your your job, whatever it is you want, those things cannot come before me. So what do you prize? Do you prize God? Man, you got to make him a priority. So I want to challenge you with this. I want you to commit. Here's what I want us to do. Commit to 21 in 2021. What if you committed to 21 in 2021? 21 minutes in the word of God every day. We can all do that. Turn to somebody and tell them, I can do that. I can do that. All of us, I don't care how busy you think you are, all of us have 21 minutes. You can find 21 minutes. What would happen in your life if you said, Jesus is my prize, and I'm going to give him 21 minutes of undivided attention. Cultivate the soil of your soul. Here's the last one, verse 20. The seed that fell on good soil, it represents those who hear and accept God's word. And they produce a harvest, 30, 60, 100 times as much has been planted. Turn to somebody right now and tell them, you've got to plant it. You've got to plant it. You've got to plant it. You've got to plant God's word. Here's the last one. So we have the soil of pride. We have the soil of problems. We have the soil of priorities. Here's the last one, the soil of promise. This is the soil and the seed that comes with a promise. And Jesus said, this is the only soil that produces fruit. I don't know. How, we want instant fruit, don't we? But, the, but listen, there's not, I don't care what you make that's instant. Nothing instant is good. I mean, instant pudding. I love instant pudding. But the, other than that, no. Like this pill, come on, let's think about this for a moment. This pill that I started with this morning Instant vegetables. But you know what I found out? It's a supplement. It it can't take the place of the real thing. It's something that I'm supposed to be taking along with what I'm doing. You you can't, there is no magic pill when it it comes to God's word. You've got to cultivate the soil of your soul every single day. I think one of the reasons that we don't is because we have this impression and we're falsely taught that, you know, every day I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get my Bible and I'm going to open it up. And for some reason we think I'm going to open it up and all of a sudden this beam of light is going to come down from heaven and we're going to hear, oh, angels are going to start singing. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, I've been reading this for over three decades. Can I tell you what a lot of mornings look like for me? I read it, I got nothing. (laughs) Yeah. What are you trying to say there, God? Hmm. Uh, Okay. I'm reading, reflect, I'm trying to, I, I got nothing. And so many days are like that. You read, nothing. You read, nothing. You read, I mean like nothing. Can I tell you this? Keep planting seed. Keep planting the seed. Turn to somebody, tell them, keep planting the seed because here's what's going to happen because this is what happens to me is you read and nothing, you read and nothing, you read and then suddenly God shows up. Suddenly, there's there's revelation from the word. Suddenly, there is wisdom. I've been looking for an answer to that. I've been wondering what I'm supposed to do, and there it is, and God is speaking to you. Suddenly, peace comes into the room where you're sitting with Jesus, and you feel his presence, and you're like, there it is, that you don't want to leave that moment. Suddenly, there is joy. Suddenly, there is confidence. Suddenly there is power in your life. I can't tell you how many times I've been talking with somebody and and they're going through a difficult time and you'll be at work and you'll be at school and somebody's struggling and and then you're talking to them and then suddenly the word that has been planted in you is going to come out of you as a word of encouragement and hope to somebody else. Cultivate the soil of your soul.